and we will begin. Please post your questions in the Q&A only, or certainly we'll invite you to raise your hand if you have any specific questions at the end. After later today, we will record this webinar on slides and post them on our community site and also email a copy to participants. Briefly about myself, I am the founder and CEO of Multifunding. I write for Inc. regularly on business lending issues. I have a book out called The Growth Dilemma, and for my entrepreneur organization friends out there, I'm a proud member of, board member of EO Philadelphia. My lawyers asked me to read a few disclaimers. We are in an unprecedented time in history and the information available to us is changing rapidly. Please refer to our current presentation for education. The information provided is based upon our best judgment about what we know at this time. However, key questions remain about how to implement this program. Multifunding LLC does not accept any liability as it relates to the timeliness or content of the information we are sharing today or may share in the future and we are under no legal duty to update any such information or recommendations. We encourage you, encourage you to check in with your attorneys, CPAs, and financial advisors for additional insights. This is the time for us to be thinking about what is next for our business, developing our strategies and our pivot strategies, sorting out our team, and one critical important of this is figuring out how much cash we need to get through the uncertain path ahead of us. How much cash will be required to get your business back on a stable footing? What is the best case and worst case scenario? And where will this cash come from? And what does your future look like and what opportunities do you want to consider? This is all the vein of the Main Street Lending Program that I want to talk about today. It is allocated, has $600 billion allocated for the, under the CARES Act. However, let's be clear, this program has, is hobbling out of the starting gate, struggling to get up on the ground. And yesterday, Secretary Munchkin predicted that there might not be then 25 to 50 billion part, uh, participating in the program. It is as of now in effect until December 30th, 2020, and it is comprised of three facilities, the new, the priority, and the expanded. Let's be clear, this is not an entitlement program like the PPP. If your business has been hardly hit by COVID-19, your best chance for a Main Street loan will be through your existing bank. It is unlikely that you will get a new bank to lend to a business in a difficult position, despite that being the intent of the program. If you plan to use a Main Street loan to expand and grow, more banks will be open to you. The program is live. Most participating banks are up and running at different speeds very slowly. There's a list of participating lenders on the Federal Reserve site. It is not 100% complete or accurate, accurate, and the program has been extended until December 31st. You have to think about in all this, what is the motivation of the lenders? If you have a bunch of debt without, with a current lender today, they might consider if you're eligible to offer you a main street in order to give you more runway and protect their current liabilities. If you're looking for new lenders, they are likely looking for strong credits and new banking relationships. There are about 500 bank savings association or credit unions across the country, in theory registered for this program, although a lot less are actively participating. To be eligible, your business must be established prior to March 13th, 2020. If you have more than 15,000 employers or 10,019 annual revenue of $5 billion, you're too big. And you have to be created or organized in the United States under the laws of the US with most of your operations in the US. To meet the US eligibility test, your, your subsidiaries have to be greater than 50% of your assets in the US annual net income generated in the U.S. and annual net operating revenues generated in the U.S. Subsidiaries of foreign companies can apply as long as they attest that they will not send the money abroad to their parent company. As well, business types include partnerships, LLCs, corporations, associations, trusts, cooperatives, joint ventures with no more than 49% participation by foreign business entities or tribal business concerns. 
nonprofits can participate, but in a different program that we're talking about today. There are certain industries that are ineligible, developers, landlords, other private equity firms are not eligible, other businesses that um, the government considers to be speculative, such as ironically casinos are considered uh, not eligible. If you are part of an affiliated group of companies and you own several companies, all that those companies can as a whole only participate in one Main Street facility and the affiliated group's loan amount cannot exceed the maximum loan amount for that facility. Now let's dig into the three facilities. The first two, the most commonly used, at least that we've seen so far, are the new and the priority. These two loan types share several attributes. They are secured or unsecured. They have a five-year maturity. Principal payments are deferred for two years, and then the interest payments are deferred for one year. You pay 15% at the end of year three, 15% at the end of year four, and 70% at the end of year five. They are priced at an adjustable rate of LIBOR plus 3%, currently approximately 3.3%. You can prepay without penalty, and to get in, there's an origination fee of, we've never seen anything less than 2%. To get a new facility loan, they start at 250,000 or go as high as 35 million. I want to be clear, our experience in the market is anything less than a million is just not getting looked at. So how do you figure out how much of a loan size you could get? If you take as an example, the company in row three, they're based on four times your 2019 EBITDA. So if that company had half a million dollars worth of EBITDA, the maximum new loan facility they could get would be $2 million. But if that company had already had a million and a half dollars of existing debt, it would be subtracted from it, and the potential new money loan would be half a million dollars. If that same company had half a million dollars worth of existing debt in row one, they could get a facility of one and a half million dollars. What's important to understand about these loans is that if you have existing lenders, it's all about the rights of these lenders compared to your current, to the new loan. The existing lenders have to share in distribution in case of bankruptcy with the Main Street lender. But in the normal course of business, the Main Street's right, lender's rights can be subordinate to your senior lenders. These loans can be secured or unsecured, depending upon what you work out with your lender and if you have other loans. And you are able to get an additional debt after you take on the loan, as long as the rights don't conflict with the rights of your Main Street lender. Priority facilities work in a similar way, but they go slightly bigger and on higher multiples. These can be done at six times multiple EBITDA, but let me be clear um, that, um, that the, um, we are not seeing, the highest we've seen is about four and a half times EBITDA. So let's look at row number three, the company with half a million dollars um, of EBITDA their maximum they would be able to get would be six times that under this program of $3 million. If that company had a million and a half dollars worth of existing debt, they could get a potential priority money loan of one and a half million dollars. That same company in row one with half a million dollars worth of existing debt could get a potential priority money of two and a half million dollars. What's unique about this program versus other ones is that you can refinance other debt into it as long as it is not debt with your existing lender. And in these programs, the lender's rights, your Main Street lender's rights have to be senior or par on par with any other existing lenders except for your mortgage. And these loans can be secured or unsecured depending upon what you're able to work out with your lender. The expanded facilities are a little bit different. They start at 10 million and they go as high as 300 million. And these are an extension of your current loans. So as an example, a company in 2019 EBITDA of $10 million, the maximum expanded facility they might be able to get would be $60 million. However, if that company had existing debt of 25 million, they could get an expanded loan facility of 35 million. The rights of these loans are similar to the rights of, the, the, the structure of them is similar to the structure of the new and the priority, except for that the rights tag along with the existing lender. 
and they're slightly cheaper to get into. On all these loans, except if you are refinancing debt into a priority facility at origination, you commit to not use the money to repay principal or other payments of other loans. You commit not to cancel any existing lines of credit. You also certify that you have good reason to believe that your business will not go bankrupt in the next 90 days. While you have the loan, you can repay a line of credit, including a credit card in the ordinary course of business. You can take on additional debt obligations as long as they do not conflict with the rights of your Main Street lender, and you can refinance maturing debt. There are important restrictions on compensation, all that have to be considered, and you have to agree to these. There are exemptions for S corporations or other tax pass through entities that to cover tax liabilities. While you have the loan and for one year up to that, you agree not to repurchase an equity security of a listed national security exchange company or not to pay dividends or make other capital distributions with respect to the common stock of your business. There are limits on your salary based on what you earned in 2019. For those who earn between 425,000 and $3 million, do not earn more than that while you have the loan and for one year thereafter. If there's severance, you cannot earn more than twice your 2019 compensation. For those earning more than $3 million, say you earn six, you take the difference between the three and six, one and a half, you add it to the three, and you can get four and a half million dollars. While you have this loan, you agree to make reasonable efforts to retain your employees. However, unlike the PPP, that is not the main priority of these loans. Your lender will calculate, if it is a lender you've worked with previously, they will calculate your EBITDA and any proposed adjustments the way they have done it in the past. If it is a new lender, they will have to calculate your EBITDA and proposed adjustments and justify it based on how they've treated similar companies to yours before. Your debt will include all existing outstanding and undrawn debt for private and bank lenders based on the date of your mainstream application. If you have an asset-based line, what will be included is the amount you have borrowed, not the amount you could borrow. So how do you compare or choose between one of the three? Well, let's take as an example, a company in row two with $4 million of EBITDA and $10 million worth of existing debt. They could get a new facility of six, a priority facility of six, or expanded facility of 14, and it would really depend upon what they could work out with their bank and what their needs were. Financing strategies like offense and defense, and you have to think about both as you consider the Main Street loans. Three use case studies. is a company with a $3 million line of credit and $1 million drawn against it. They're planning on getting an MSLP for liquidity. They would rather not draw down their entire line. Example number two is a professional services firm whose partners will reduce draws by at least 50% in 2020 to recover from COVID-19. They plan to take an MSLP to spread their income hit over four years instead of one. And an example number three is a company that has already been approached by several competitors who plan to close shop. They plan to acquire companies at pennies on the dollar and use the MSLP money to help. So how much cash will be required to get your business back on a stable footing? Have you considered the best case and worst case scenario? And have you contemplated what your future looks like and what financing you might want to put get into place now to take advantage of opportunities as they come up. That is the end of my presentation. And now I invite anyone to put questions in the Q&A or feel free to raise your hand. Um, we are going to give everyone, it's a fairly small group, about 10 of us here. So I've given everyone the opportunity to speak and you can either put your question in chat or just go ahead and ask it verbally with your microphone on whatever you prefer. Anna, do you want to take it away? Sure, there's one question in our Q&A. You mentioned the Treasury Secretary comment about the Main Street doing about 25 to 50 billion in size. What are your thoughts on this and the new program and such? Mike, I'm completely disappointed in the whole rollout of the program. I think it is very difficult to get these loans. We're fighting like hell to get them for our clients. Um, and they have put a lot of restrictions on the lenders and a lot of gui unclear guidance on the lenders. 
that makes it very difficult to do them. So it doesn't surprise me. I think 25 to 50 billion might be an aggressive number. Hopefully the government will either open up Main Street and realize some of the design flaws in it, or will come up with new programs or potentially leverage the SBA. We just, I wish I had a crystal ball. It's very difficult to predict what will happen, especially in, in an election year. There were Fed or government plans to do lending not based on EBITDA, but on lost sales. Is this still available or am I mistaken? There is talk about the next round of Paycheck Protection Program being based on lost sales, but we haven't seen anything about it yet. And right now, all the Congress and Senate are out in their districts and on holiday. We do not want to provide a personal guarantee. Are there implications because of this? Yes. In 99.9% .9 of the cases, and that's, they're significantly very, very big companies, we are having close to an impossible time getting any Main Street lenders to consider a loan without a full person, a Main Street loan without a full personal guarantee. What percentage of MSLPs are getting approved now from what you are seeing? Uh, Manny, it's a very difficult question to answer because um, we're, we're getting a high approval rate but on the work we're doing with our clients, but that's because we're doing substantial pre-screening and very carefully picking the loans that we think we can get done. So, um, but if we took the population of everyone who reached out to us who was interested in a Main Street loan, um, the answer would be very tiny. I think we have Par Warren raising his hand. Par, feel free to just, just chat. Go ahead. Hey, Ami, how are you? I'm well, how are you? Good. Uh, given what you've talked about, uh, can you mention any or talk about any good alternatives to the MSLP that are there today that you would advise people look at? That really depends on your situation. If you're comfortable in the group to talk about your situation a little bit. Um, I'm happy to see if there's an alternative, but um, if you're not comfortable and you want to do that in a more confidential setting, I'm happy to talk to you one-on-one. -on -one. Okay, maybe I'll send you a brief note and we can talk about it after that. No, no problem, okay. Thank you. Sure. Anybody else, any questions, thoughts, concerns, ideas? Feel free to chat, just raise your hand or raise your voice or put it in the chat. Okay, we have a quiet group today. So um, if anyone, we can be of any help to anyone or you wanna talk it through, um, feel free to uh, reach out to us and um, we will be uh, happy to um, uh, speak at the time. There's a question you mentioned earlier about one entity per affiliate. Can you confine affiliates to one applicant? A application? No, each affiliate, as we understand it, has to apply separately. Anything else, guys, ladies? Going once, going twice. Use me when you've got me. Any more thoughts on the casino loan? Chris, somebody will go to jail. Anything else? Uh, thank you, Reg. We have two participants raising their hands. So um, hard for me to see who it is, but um, why don't Hi, you I mean, it's ahead. Michael. Sorry about that. Hey, Michael, how are you? You just made a little comment about the casino um, loan. Can you go into some more detail on that? Or so one of the first loans, um, amazingly, that was made through the Main Street Lending Program was a fifty million dollar loan to a, a casino um, in the Poconos, not far from my house in Philadelphia. 